All right, you see what it is down there? Uh, let's uh, make that happen. It's Friday the 13th. Yay! All right, let's move it along. So uh, first thing is pay turn to page number 10, and then go ahead and fill this out. Fill this out and see if you can tell us why does it hurt your foot when you kick a soccer ball with your bare feet. Let's, let's hear that. So uh, pause the screen and see if you can figure that out. All right, so hopefully you said something about action, reaction forces. So here's, here, and there's two different things that are involved here, right? So hold on, let me grab a ball. All right, so let's do this. And no, I'm not gonna share my bare feet, but we're gonna talk about having your shoe on versus having your shoe off. Okay, so we know for every action force, right, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. So if my hand hits this ball, the ball also applies a reaction force back to my hand, right? So that's what's going on there, right? And that's always happening. The difference is the reason it hurts your feet is because when you kick it with a shoe on, now some of that reaction force is being ab absorbed by your shoe before it ever gets to your foot. But when you kick it with a bare foot, then not the then not only is the reaction force being applied back to your foot as it normally would but now your bare foot is observing all of the force as opposed to just some of the force when you have an actual shoe on all right so hopefully that all makes uh sense for you but again um for every action force there's an equal and opposite reaction force but in the case of not having a shoe on now your foot is observing all of the force as opposed to just some of the force. All right, cool, let's move it along here. So we went through this already. So Newton's um, third law states, and we just said this, for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Forces always act on objects. Forces always act in pairs. And forces are measured in Newtons. You guys should have all this. Again, this is on page number 11. Now, direct contact forces, that is this so when forces are in direct contact with one another and then we have forces that are at a distance and we talked about those um and they're on page number 30 i believe it's number 33 and we talked about those forces at a distance that would be like gravity so that is like how the earth and the moon so the so the moon and the earth aren't touching so they're not in contact but since the earth's gravity rotational force is still acting on the moon that's why the moon doesn't just fly away right we also talked about magnetic forces and electrical forces right so those are all forces as we would call at a distance all right let's let, let let's move it along we're gonna move it along move it along over to this one so now page 46 again pause the screen Fill out everything you can. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go over to page number 47. This page right here. So 46 and 47. And try and fill all this out. Everything on this page we have already done. We've already done. I would look at pages 65, 67. Um, those, those pages might be helpful. But again, we've done all of these pages. Also look in your journal. We, we, again, we went over all of these things. So I'm going to pause it again, do 46 and 47. So answer this question. Why do some objects require more force than others to move? And then see if you can come up with all of the answers here. All right. So why do some objects require more force than others to move? Um, make sure you hopefully you wrote that in the during instruction uh, part of it. Now, if we have two objects that even if they are about the same, but one has more mass, why do you believe that it requires more force to move than others? Hopefully you filled something in to the best of your ability, okay? We are not gonna talk about the answer to this question. Um, in class, we just discussed it and I let people discuss and we will continue, because we got some more labs and some more learning to do before we get to that place of saying like let let's go into but obviously there's something you need something more like the more mass something has it seems like there needs to be more something or more force in order to get it to move 
But why is that, right? Like, like I believe we all understand that, like, the heavier an object is, the, the more strength I've got to use or more force I have to exert in order to get to move. But why is that? So see if that's how you can answer that one. All right, let's move it along to this one. Now, we talked about this, and we I said all the answers are in your journal or in your notebook, right? Like, And again, hopefully you tried to fill out some of this on your own. But let's just take a look. Remember this thing? If you don't have this in your journal, right? If you don't have this in your journal, you definitely need to pause the screen and get this in your journal ASAP because this definitely would help you with delineating between balanced and unbalanced forces. And then what's, what's going on with the motion of each one, what it results in, right? So look at that, results in, results in. So let, let's go over here and just look at some of these things. So forces, right, they can be balanced or unbalanced. And if you look at those two, two forces acting on opposite directions of an object are equal in size or equal in, remember that the word of the day, whoo, magnitude right we talked about that magnitude so they're equal in size or magnitude unbalanced forces causes change in motion of an object and the forces acting in opposite directions are not equal in magnitude they're not equal in size okay um so the net force here should be guess what if they're both equal and they're both acting in opposite directions then it should be balanced or equal to zero right and then the net forces over here should be unbalanced or greater than zero so it could be 0 0.1 newtons totally cool so um balanced forces result in what we would say will not accelerate or will not change in motion and then um unbalanced forces will accelerate they will change in their motion they will speed up they will slow down right or they will change directions end it for today and then uh i'll see you guys on monday peace have a good weekend